from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for being here. Um, I'm Chris Murphy. I'm the head of the Near East section in uh, the African Middle Eastern Division. Uh, on behalf of my colleagues in the division, and in particular, our chief, Dr. Mary Jane Deeb, I want to wish you all the warmest of welcomes. Uh, Dr. Deeb, um, unfortunately for us, is not here today. She is in England, where hopefully the weather is kinder than what we're facing out there in all the heat. Anyway, as I said, I'm Chris Murphy. I'm head of the Near East section, which is one of three sections in the African Middle Eastern Division. The other two sections are the African section, whose staff is responsible for developing the collection from and about Sub-Saharan Africa. The Hebraic section, whose staff is responsible for developing the collection at the library of Judaica worldwide and holds the collection of materials in the Hebrew alphabet, it's Hebrew, Yiddish, Ladino, et cetera. And as an auxiliary to that section, there's uh, an Ethiopian program that holds uh, a significant collection of Ethiopian materials. And then the Near East section is responsible for developing the collection from and about all the Arab countries, Iran, Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Turkey and Turkic Central Asia, the countries of the Caucasus, Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan, as well as materials produced by and about the Muslims in Western China, Russia, and the Balkans. Or as I often say, um, our purview runs from Casablanca in the west to Kashgar in the east, from Khartoum in the south to Kazan in the north. Today's program is co-sponsored by the Science, Technology, and Business Division of the Library of Congress. Um, I spoke to uh, Ron Bluestone, the chief of that division, uh, asking if uh, he wanted to come and say anything, and he opined that uh, I would be able to uh, provide all the information that would help scholars and researchers come to their division. The Science and Technology Division is responsible for developing the collection on science and technology, including medicine, here at the Library of Congress. Their staff is specialized often in relatively uh, distinct areas, uh, certainly between business and science and technology, and on the other side, science and technology such uh, issues as engineering or applied science. And like we here in the African Middle Eastern Division, besides developing the collection, the primary purpose of our existence is to make the collection known and accessible to researchers. And that is the second important uh, task of both the staff of this division and of our coadjutors in the Science, Technology, and Business Division. One of the ways in which this making the collection available and known is done are lectures and programs like today's. And th these divisions, both of them, have quite a series of programs throughout the year. And of course, you are all invited to come and to learn about not only the subject of the lecture, but about the collections here at the library. Now, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Fatima Keshvarez, who is the director of the Roshan Center for Persian Studies at the University of Maryland, and who is a wonderful collaborator on a number of uh, events with uh, the African Middle Eastern Division, and our presenter, I would like them to come up, and Fatima Hanum will introduce the speaker, please. Okay, well, 
سلام و خوش آمدین مخصوصا به زبان آموزان عزیزمون Welcome everyone This is really a wonderful day We're going to look at a very important topic Namely fighting pediatric cancer in Iran And meet the individual who has single-handedly made a big difference in that regard uh, Not only as you'll see in the country But even in the region as it seems to be The project seems to be um, uh, moving out of Iran. Um, but I would like to um, also before that say a word of thank you to all my um, amazing friends at the library. It has been a wonderful year. Um, Hira John, Chris, Mary Jane, it's, it, who's not here unfortunately. She told me she would have very much liked to be here but um, she's traveling. It's been really a journey for all of us to explore, to, to learn, and to see what ways are there to make a difference in terms of educating uh, as far as we can. I would also like to express thanks to the Science Division, or um, Division of Science and Business, I believe, and Technology and Business. We are really um, thankful for your co-sponsorship. It's, it's very important to work with all of you and we appreciate that. Um, well, no one can tell the story of fighting pediatric cancer in Iran better than Saideh Quds, who's our guest today. Uh, Saideh was born and raised in Iran. Her father was a school principal and her mother a homemaker. She grew up um, like many members of her generation of in educated families, listening to poetry and enjoying the beautiful nature of, in her case, Shemiran in Tehran, in Iran, where she grew up. All this was reflected later on in a book that she published based on the life of Kimya Khatun, Rumi's adopted daughter. Um, the book, which has actually been translated into English in 2011, and at the same title, Kimya Khatun, has reached 25th editions in Iran since its publication. So we ha it has been quite a, a wonderful marriage of, um, of history, of literature, of storytelling combined in one work. Ms. Quds um, studied geography and received her master's degree in urban planning in Iran which earned her her first job in the Ministry of Industry and Natural Resources as the International Relations Officer or expert. Later on, she married an Iranian diplomat who um, traveled widely, and uh, she did too, therefore, to many parts of the world, um, including Pakistan and Germany. And it was in Germany that her second child, Kiana, who is um, with us today, and it's been really a wonderful joy to get to meet Kiana. Um, she was diagnosed with cancer, and as uh, the family went through the ordeal of treatment, and we are delighted that it was successful, and she is now a symbol of cure rather than illness, but Saide made a, a resolution that she'll devote her life to fighting pediatric cancer, and mostly because um, a lot of families do not have the means to deal with this really um, huge medical problem, which is also psychologically um, something difficult to deal with. Um, this is how um, she established uh, MAHAC, the Society to Support Children Suffering from Cancer, and the medical complex, which is now spread around it all through the hard work of hers and others who joined her and will today look a little bit also at the um, social aspects of this movement in Iran. Um, it, I, I'm really happy to be able to bring that into the discussion in the library. As you all know, very often Iran's only associated with politics the region mostly, but in this case, Iran. And it's a joy to show other aspects of the society and where people are heavily involved in civic activity and other um, important um, social roles that they play. As we speak, 
MAHAC covers over 9,000 um, children who are being treated. And the name of pediatric cancer is inseparable from MAHAC and from Saida's name. In fact, in 2008, Wall Street Journal identified her as a woman you need to follow because she's making a major difference in the world. So um, I have good news for our language learners. We have asked her to speak Persian, um, but I'm going to provide some translation just in case there are people who don't have um, Persian uh, in, the, in the audience. So with that, please welcome Saide Rots to the podium. Say hello in English. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I thank you on behalf of. Uh, uh, I want first thank you all of you on behalf of uh, our board of trustees and board of directors, doctors, nurses, and uh, kids who are uh, under umbrella of this. Uh, uh, love of many, many people inside and outside of the country. Uh, you can't hear, okay. <laughs> yeah. This is an illness that I have. I talk always to, 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 to um, softly. <laughs> so should I repeat what I said? I wanted to thank you to be here, to share uh, your love with us, with our goal with what we are looking at for us as Iranian and for humanity as a human. Uh, I say thank you in behalf of um, Board of Trustees, Board of Directors, nurses, doctors, and kids and their parents uh, who you shared your love with them. However, many of you maybe directly are not um, um, connected to Mahak, but a person who dedicate time coming here in this morning, meaning it's one of us, one of this uh, circle of people who, are, who cares for humanity. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Merci, Saida Jan. So, meeting before you in the sea, Baham. I'm going to ask her to speak about her personal um, experience because her life journey has been associated uh, with this matter. I don't know if you speak English, but I don't know if you speak English. In Iran, the name of the Kudakan and the Saratani and the name of them is the name of them. And in this question, the first question is that if it's possible to talk about your personal experience, و دلایلی که این مسئله یک بخش مهمی از زندگی تو شد برای ما صحبت کنیم لطفا. Uh, okay. I want to um, correct uh, you and everybody who is thinking that this huge achievement is mine. It's not. It wouldn't be possible. Oh, of excuse course. me. Oh, sorry. Yeah, in one thing that no one ever happened. No one ever happened. If I was alone, then this is a achievement for the people of Iran. I know this is related to the people of Iran. So this is not my personal achievement, she says, and. Um, this is, could not have happened by a single person, and I don't see it as just my own. I, I, I see it as belonging to the entire people of, of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, about the story, I think um, you, know, you said half of that, that, uh, that happens to my child. Um, as she was two years old, and... Um, Before. I, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, بر صورت این اتفاق وقتی افتاد برای من که باوری نداشتم که میتونه یک اتفاق بد برای من بیفته. برای اینکه فکر میکردم من آدمیم که همیشه سعی کردم درست باشم چرا اتفاق بد برای من بیفته. و بعد از یه مدتی که اونو پذیرفتم دیدم که چقدر 
نادان بودم در اون تصوراتم و چقدر در های شعور به روی من بسته بود قبل از این تجربه برای اینکه اون باعث شد من با آدم های آشنا بشم که هرگز قبل از اون باشون حرف شد شروع نمیکردم به حرف زدن و تو این شرایط مجبور شدم کنارشون بشینم و بعد دیدم چه انسان های بزرگتر از من دور من هستن که درد های بزرگتری دارن و گرفتاری های بیشتر دارن so, um... Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, so Saida is explaining that um, one of the, because I told you the basic story of, of Kiana mm -hmm. being sick, and so what she's adding is that um, one thing that this event did for her was that she had not thought that something bad could happen to her. Basically the feeling that since you are a good person, you do what you feel you need to do, you don't expect anything bad to happen to her. And when this happened, uh, she feels that many doors opened before her, uh, particularly in relation to getting to know other people who had suffered. And people that whom she might have not otherwise started a conversation with or began to know, she began to, to, to approach and learn about. And so she sees this as a important way to open doors in, in her life. من در این نقطه احساس کردم که این یک پلیس بوده که خدا خواسته که من به یکی از سرنوشت یا یونیورس خواست که من به یک هیته دیگه از زندگی دست پیدا کنم با یک ویزدم بیشتر, بیشتر در واقع به زندگی نگاه کنم و نتونم فراموش بکنم آدم های خوبی که اطراف من کمتر امکانات داشتن و سعی کنم که مسیر زندگی رو به طرفی ببرم که شیر کنم Uh, and the result of that was the decision that I have to share more with other people and change the direction of my journey so that I would be more with people rather than being in my own kind of corner or cocoon. Um, so I'm going to ask about Mahak now. Yeah. And um, can you that? Mahak, at the beginning, Mahak, at the beginning, تشکیلاتی بود که تشکیلات اصلا نبود یک اراده بود برای اینی که ما بتونیم کمک بکنیم به اون چند تا آدم که در اطراف اون هستن که میشناس... میشناسیمشون در حالی که نیدش... نیازشون رو نمیشناختیم به تدریج هرش بیشتر با نیازهای اونا آشنا شدیم دیدیم که این نیا... کمک احتیاج به ارگانیزیشن داره این چیزی نیست که یک نفر یا پنج نفر کمک کنن پس ما باید یک ارگانیزیشن ستل بکنیم کار کنیم به عنوان یک سازمان So in the beginning, Mahak was not an organization. It was just the will of a group of people. Um, but the more we got in touch with people and, uh, the, and saw their needs, uh, we realized that a group of people couldn't do this, that we needed organization, structure, and th that kind of systematic approach right. to the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, It was not easy. This glory of um, this salon doesn't let me talk in Farsi. I think <laughs> I'm in the US. <laughs> anyway, uh, in uh, in. Uh, اتفاقی که افتاد در زمانی افتاد که در مملکت من ایران بحران جنگ بود و بحران های اجتماعی پی در پی بود بنابراین کنار هم جمع شدن یک گروه از انسان ها کار آسونی نبود بنابراین شاید قسمت سخت کار ما همون آغاز بود برای اینکه بتونیم آدم ها رو دور هم جمع بکنیم و ثبت بکنیم یک, ار... یک تشکیلات به عنوان یک سازمان مردم نهاد این اتفاقی بودش که سخت تر بود Iran Iraq war um, it was very hard to bring a group of people together and um, start an organization and register it properly and go through all the you know steps that needed to be taken yeah متوجه بودن که ما واقعا میخوایم اون کار اعتماد کنن به ما که اون کاری رو داریم میگیم میخوایم بکنیم که واقعی هستش نه اینی که زیر این نیت بخوایم که حرکت دیگه رو انجام بدیم این مهمترین 
achievement ما تو قدم های اولیه همون بود um, and in the first steps the um, most important uh, progress was or the big, biggest hurdle we had to deal with was to convince the officials that we were not doing anything else besides what we were doing and we were very lucky in working always with people who believed us who actually accepted that this is what we are doing and they supported us if I want to 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 این هست که در همون آغاز افرادی که بیستا دوستی که و خانواده و یا پزشکانی که دور هم جمع شدیم یک نفر از بین همه اونا به من گفت که یک بیزنسمن موفق بود و در بقیه بیمارستان بزرگ و اداره میکرد من گفتش که سعید تو آخرین مشکل پوله اگر درست کار بکنی هیچ نگران نباش حالا که این ثبت شده تموم شد یه قدم مهم برداشته شد بعد از این اصلا نگران نباش تنها کاری که دیگه الان احتیاج داری بکنی اینی که درست کار کنی و راست بگی به مردم پول خودش میاد و دهت فاز سمت یک حقیقت که من دلم میخواد هدیه بدم به همه کسانی که میخوان کار اجتماعی بکنن. Okay, as I just saying that in order to get to the other aspects of the work, we just so she's making the story of the the kind of the history of the development of Mahak short, but there's one point she wants to share with us, which is um, once they registered it and there were a group of 20 families and, and friends, including physicians and, and, um, and others. Um, that one person who was a very successful businessman told her, it's done, we are ready to, to move. The least of, your, of our problems would be money. And um, so don't worry about that. What we need to do is to do what we are doing properly. And as long as we do that, money will come in, and that's what, what exactly happened, as she's saying. So um, just showing that they really meant what they were doing, and they were doing it properly, worked. Um, um, I think <laughs> مسئله سرطان یک مسئله اجتماعی یه مسئله فقط پزشکی نیست بنابراین اگر که کمی به ما هم درباره مشکلاتی که از نظر پزشکی و علمی باهاش روبرو بودیم و مشکلاتی که از نظر اجتماعی باهاش روبرو بودیم صحبت کنیم so i'm asking her to address Um, because cancer is not just a medical problem, it's also a social problem, to just talk a little bit to the issue of medicine and science, medical aspects of it, but also the social aspect. Yes. In the social issues, I am very proud of the fact that the music is a role model for the young people that is also در واقع به واسطه میدیا این ذهنیت وجود داره برای همه که نمیشه و نمیتونیم یک شدن و یک توانستن رو به جامعه القا میکنه که در اون مورد میتونم تا صبح حرف بزنم ترجیح هم اینه که بخوام قبلا روی اون چیزی که دیپارتمانی که این تاک رو در واقع ارنج کرده بیشتر اینسیست داره یعنی قسمت علمی کارمون اول صحبت کنم بعد وقت باقی مانده رو میریم روی مسائل سوشلی اجتماعی مون حتما So, uh, the issue of the social aspect of cancer is very important and I can talk about it for a long time, particularly that Mahak became a role model in achieving this difficult goal in Iran, uh, particularly with support from young people and other conditions where people felt they can't, that it's very easy to think I can't do it, that there are too many issues to deal with, it's not going to happen. But Mahak actually became a success and a role model. But because um, also we are co-sponsoring with the science department and the science aspect of it is important, she would like to address the science side first. 
بچه های فارسی یاد میگیرن حرف من به فارسی متوجه میشین زبون منو میش متوجه میشین پس من شما رو نگاه میکنم به جای اینکه خانم کشاورز بله <تصفيق> من ترجیح همیشه دوست دارم اودینس رو نگاه بکنم ما در طول درمان بچه هامون با چند ایشو برخورد کردیم که بسیار مهم بود و در زمانی که بچه من این مشکل رو پیدا کرد و حتی در 15 سال پیش اینا همچنان مسائل بزرگی بودن همونطور که میدونین سرطان یک فوبیا هستش در بود در جهان و امروز هنوز هم یک کمی یک کمایی هست به ویژه اگر برای آدم های خیلی جوان اتفاق میفته میتونه افکت کنه آیندهشون مواردی که افکت میکرد آیندهشون رو دانش تا اندازه حل کرده بود ولی برای ما قابل دسترسی نبود و دسترسی اون بسیار گرون بود برای اینکه بچه ها رو بفرسیم خارج از کشور میخوان این پارت رو ترجمه کنیم که طولانی نباشن بعد بقیه There are many issues involved, particularly for younger people because of the taboo associated with cancer. And for us, it was very difficult to deal with the uh, treatment because if they needed to be sent outside the country, it would have been very expensive. In and حالا چه پسر چه دختر تصور همیشه این بود که کسی که کیموتراپی میگیره و یا رادیوتراپی میگیره ممکنه که بعدا نتونه بچه دار بشه دوم این بود که همواره تصور میشد که این بیماری از مادر به بچه اومده نومت رو باید و مادر یکی گره تقصیر داره چون که پسر پسر همش سرطان داشته این جن اومده برای این بچه این دو تا مسئله بود و دیگه مسئله پیوند مغز استخوان هستش که برای بسیاری از انواع سرطان یک درمان التیمیت هستش و این باز در ایران امکان نداشت و ما میدیدیم که خانواده ها به لحاظ اینی که پزشک به مادر میگفت که این بچه باید پیوند بشه و پیوند یک چیزی حدود 300 هزار پوند با کشوری که ما باش در ارتباط بودیم در اون زمان انگلیس 300 هزار پوند یا یه چیزی معادل این با یک بیمارستانی در, در, در ایتالیا این حزینه این بود کی میتونه 300 هزار پوند بپردازه بعد پدر مادر با هم دوشار مشکل میشدن چون مادر میخواست همه چی رو بفروشه و این پول بده و پدر نمیتونه زیر بار این بره این سه تا ایشیو بود که همه خیلی مشکل بود و بهش بگیم Uh, the three major issues that led to taboos for people, one was the thought that it could lead to um, barrenness and uh, stop procreation, and so the health, the kind of productivity um, would be um, affected by it. The other one was that um, mothers were viewed as the one who carried the illness and passed it Quite on. Genetic. Gen, uh, through their, their genes, um, that was the assumption. But also, uh, the last one, the bone marrow transplant was very difficult to be done. It could not be done in Iran at the time. And the cost of doing that in the country we were in touch with, which could do it, namely England, was about 300,000 pounds was the cost of one uh, operation. So these were the good news for you, uh, the subject that you are interested in, and the good news for you, is that we have been able to do this for the last 10 years, to be able to do this for the people, to be able to do this for the people, to be able to do this for the people, دو میلیون سه میلیون دلار ارزشش هست ما اکویپمنت ها در واقع اون دیپارتمان ها رو همه رو تنظیم کنیم یعنی اینی که محک امروز یک بخش پیوند مغز و سخان داره یک بخش جنتیک داره و یه بخش برای پریزرف کردن در واقع تخمک ها و اون به هر صورت آماده کردن و نگهداری کردن امکان باروری پسر اسپرم پسر ها هستش و این هم ما داریم یعنی این سه تا موضوعی که همواره میتونستش چه ساینتیفیکلی و چه سوشیالی و چه خانوادگی همه چی رو افکت بکنه خوشبختانه طی 10 سال آینده این دیپارتمان رو در محک داریم و وی ار ورکینگ ما با بالاترین استاندارد جهانی الان اونجا داریم این اقدامات رو انجام میدیم 
Um, the good news is that all these three problems have been solved, and we do have now the means of um, preserving the, I guess, the sperm and the, the and, and the ovaries. Yes, thank you. And um, and for for that uh, treatment, we also have a genetic um, division that could look into that issue of um, genes and so on. And we also have a bone marrow transplant department. So we right now we are working at the highest level of international standards of treatment. Yeah, this, these are the aspects that I thought it's uh, very important for uh, the, the uh, sponsor of this uh, session, that uh, in Iran for now, we, are, uh, we enjoy the, uh, really the um, last, last possible achievement of science, and uh, it's not about Iran. In Mahak, there is a moral that we don't say it's for Iranian children, it's for children, just for children. Children from Iraq, from Afghanistan, from Pakistan, from Azerbaijan, from every from, from Ghana, from, from everywhere in uh, Africa, they come to us, and most of the time, they uh, have really the most expensive treatment because they couldn't do that in their own land, and we are enough lucky to be able to not say no to them. Of course, we write letters to embassies; they never come back to us because you know this, they think that's not their job. But God is helping us when we continue, of course, in this way. Merci. Hello, I'm a Farsi Tarjum. That's fine. That's fine. I thought that was beautiful. Is this is actually this say I don't think that I mean, this is the thing that man when I tamum me konam be Englishi tamum me konam as a child of me. But actually, this was my next question because one of the things I was very impressed with was that not only that um, the whole treatment is for free, there is no political or governmental attachment, there is no nationality barrier, and that was really something that made me feel so proud that you could be, um, you know, from any country just coming there and people hear about it and, and, and come there. So. Uh, Say the answer that part. So um, I heard that, and I'm going to ask about that since you understand my question. I'm not going to translate my question for you, but um, I understand that Mahak is also a place in which scholars are working on the native varieties of pediatric cancer. So. That's a, um, an area in which the institution could push the, you know, the borders of scholarship forward because its um, patients are predominantly Iranian. So, ریسرچ تو ایران کار خیلی مشکلیه ما باید اعتراف بکنیم به ضعفمون ما ذاتا ایرانیا آدمای فوق العاده باهوشی هستیم ولی آدمایی نیستیم که ساعت ها توی لب بشیم منتالی حالا به هر صورت الان جنریشن جدید کمی به خاطر این همه عادت به نشستن پشت کامپیوتر داره یواش یواش یاد میگیره که بشینه کار کنه به جای جنریشن ما که فقط میدویدیم و میدویم هنوز بنابراین در ارتباط با یعنی یکی از اهداف محک کار کردن روی دلایل بومی سرطان هست چون سرطان دو, دو تا محمل داره یکی ژنتیکی است و یکی جهشی است که بنابراین شرایط محیطی اتفاق میفته مثل آب و هوا مثل تغذیه مثل استرس همه این حرفا و یا گاهی اوقات یک عواملی هست مثل مثلا در 
اطراف رامسر یه جایی ما داریم که یک نوع آب مدنی داره و یه نوع در واقع بخارهای از این منطقه متساعد میشه که میتونه منجب نوعی از حس سرطان ریه بشه خب این یک حدس بوده ولی هنوزم که هنوزه هرچند که خیلی داره روش کار میشه بازم هنوز به اونجایی نرسیده که ما بتونیم اینو اعلام بکنیم ولی میتونیم این آلار رو بدیم به خانواده‌ای که اونجا زندگی میکنن که حواسشون جمع‌تر باشه و یا اینی که زندگی زیر جاهایی که برق ترانسفر میشه باز خیلی جای خطرناکیه و ما دیدیم که مدرسه های زیادی اونجا ها بوده باز اینطوری نمیتونیم بریم به وزارت آموزش برش بگیم این مدرسه ها رو ببندیم مگر اینکه ما با تحقیقاتی داشته باشیم کار کرده باشیم روی اون مدرسه ها ولی در ویزیتی که داشتم از انایش اینجا واقعا غرق خوشحالی شدم از اینی که خدا رو شد که سنگشن و همه این چیزا مربوط به دانش نمیشه مربوط به علم نمیشه و محق این اپورچنیتی رو داره که با انایش بیاد کار کنه و از ساینتیست های ایرانی مقیم انایش و یا ساینتیست های امریکایی دعوت کنه که بیان یه فیلدی رو باز کنن در ارتباط با بعضی از انواع سرطان که در جنوب ما خیلی زیاد میبینیم ولی یک ریسرچ دو سه ساله میخواد که ما ببینیم که این مال بمبارانه شیمیایی بوده نبوده جرئت نمیکنیم اینو بگیم قبل از اینکه ریسرچ بشه چون پدر مادر رو به وحشت بندازیم خونشون رو ول کنن بیان باید مطمئن باشیم اینه که اینجا بیبی استپ داریم ما توی ریسرچ Okay, so wonderful points. Um, well, Saida's first comment was that the Iranian temperament is not that of a researcher sitting in a corner. <laughs> the prophet run around and talk to others. But then she admitted that young people are actually doing a lot of research. So, um, um, and the point, and the other point uh, she made was that, yes, it is important to look at these um, uh, native varieties um, because genetic um, explanation is not the only explanation for why cancer happens. Um, some of it is a kind of mutation, some of it is environmental, and so, uh, for example, somewhere in northern Iran in the uh, city of Ramsar, um, there is a hot water spring and there's this, uh, feeling an idea that this could cause some kind of skin cancer. Um, or for example, there are schools in areas um, that have been either um, being close to electri uh, electric um, establishments or having been uh, in the war zone where chemical attacks took place. Um, there appears to be more uh, an elevated level of cancer. However, all of these things are very difficult to address and mention if you're not sure. You cannot go to the government and say, you have to close uh, these 10 schools or tell people don't go to this area you know, in Ramsar or in areas that were uh, in the war zone because um, if you don't have solid results, you cannot really either scare people or expect them to make big changes in their, in their lives. And, um, and she's saying that, thank goodness, the sanctions are not on knowledge and are not on exchange of learning and knowledge, and therefore there is contact between Iranian scientists, Iranian-American scientists, and other American scientists, and I'm sure Europeans as well. Um, actually, I can take this minute and tell you that because of our program here, uh, the NIH um, contacted um, Saide, and she has already had one visit there, and I'm sure that they're very willing because of the, you know, they communicated with University of Maryland first. I think they are very excited and very willing to establish relationships. And um, this would be, of course, things that could be mutually beneficial for both sides in terms of providing the kinds of data that they don't have access to or the kind of research they don't have access to and also um, on the Iranian side, access to knowledge and technology that they may not have access to. This is the so, fruit of this kind of uh, actions. So, um, 
I'm translating the English again. <laughs> but, uh, so this is really, so this kinds of get together, this kinds of exchange is very fruitful and she sees that as the outcome and fruit of this kind of exchange. راستش نه برای من یه سری سوال سوال جواب آره فکر می‌کنم اگر که بازش کنیم به برای سوال در واقع جمله رو میگم که بریم توی اون یکی حتما 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 من می‌خوام یک چیزی رو بگم که شاید ارتباطی با محق نداشته باشه ولی احساس شخصی من هست از اینی که باید حتما به شما بگم که یک موجی از خوشحالی تنها نیست شعفه یعنی بالای خوشحالی هست تو وجود من الان هست از دیدن چهره این همه چهره جوان مالتی نشنالی که بشینن و بخوان فارسی یاد بگیرن فارسی حرف بزنن برای اینکه ما توی مملکتمون همواره این حجوم میدیا رو که همه چیز رو در اونجا تاریخ نشون میده برای ما خیلی سخته اونجا که چیزای خیلی قشنگی هم هنوز در وقتی مردم هستن اتفاق میفته به واسطه مردم اتفاقی خیلی قشنگی میفته یک کشور زیبای ثروتمند پر از نیروی انسانی هستش و ما چقدر خوشحالیم که چهره های جوانی مثل شما این علاقمندی رو نشون دادن که یاد بگیرن فرهنگ ما رو بشناسن و بیان و ما همه کار میکنیم برای اینکه شما ها بتونید راحت تر در واقع این پرشنتون رو ادامه بدید. Okay, so I, I can see from the smiles that quite a few of you have already understood. And Zayda is just very happy to see very many young people of multinational backgrounds um, putting their efforts into learning Persian. And she sees that as a joy, really more than just being happy, really very joyous occasion for her because she feels that um, the culture she comes from is very often presented in a very limited and negative way. And whereas, as far as people are concerned, she's saying there is a lot of um, wonderful things happening. It's a country with a lot of resources, with a lot of human resources and other possibilities and the last thing she added was that people like me will do everything we can do to to help you with the learning journey that you have started and to keep you connected with the country which actually the library is one of the yeah, main exactly. uh, you know resource sure. for that or tools for that i think with that it would be probably a good time to open to questions and you can ask your question in Persian or English, whichever you prefer. And um, we'll just take it from there. But before we get there, um, I hope I'm not putting you on a spot, Kiana. Can I ask you just to stand and be recognized? <laughs> because... Uh, <laughs> Healthy and beautiful, and uh, just just graduated from Stanford with an MBA in business. So <laughs> there she is, the, 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 one of the main reasons why um, the effort in, in, in Iran for uh, fighting pediatric cancer has been so successful. A beautiful reason, I should say. Okay, so with that, um, please, um, don't be shy. I think the only thing I have to say is what you always announce, that if you ask a question, you will be on that video, and, and so if... این اتفاق اتفاقی که به تدریج افتاده برای اینکه فرض کنیم که ما به خاطر جنگ افغانستان ایران یک میلیون رفیوجی رو میزبانی میکنه اون رفیوجی ها بچهاشون که مریض میشه توسط دکترها ریفر میشن به ما بعد این 
خب فامیلی به فامیل خودش در حرات مثلا میگه که او من بچه هم بردم اینجا فوق العاده است اونم از اونجا میاد اون از اونجا مثلا یکی در افغانستان در رفیجی اف... پاکستان مثلا یا این ور یا اون ور این اول اینطوری اتفاق افتاد عراق عین همین ما با کمیسر یعنی کمیسری رفیجی یو ان داریم کار میکنیم یو ان اس سی آر از ورکینگ ویت اس به خاطر اینی که تم از سوریه از هر جا اول با پناهندگاه شروع شد ولی بعد مثلا ساحل آجیا اینجا توسط در واقع فکر میکنم اینترنت چک میکنن که کجا رایگان میشه درمان کرد بچه رو از وقتی که ما توی اینترنت هستیم ما اونا رو خیلی ما رو راحت پیدا میکنن و میان اوکی okay, so, um... That connection, the question was how did they make contact from countries like Iraq and Afghanistan, it has happened gradually. Um, for example, um, because Iran has hosted about a million Afghan refugees, so they've been referred to um, the children with cancer ha have been referred to Mahag, and then those people have spoken to their relatives in Herat or in some other part of um, their country, and then gradually through the word, of, uh, the word of mouth, this has spread. That's one way. And um, we have, she has worked with the UN on that, and so um, the, the, the particular part of the UN that you referred to was? UNSCR. UNSCR, right. Um, so that stands for United Nations Commission. For refugees, sure. Commission for Refugees, uh, thank you. Um, so they refer them to Mahak, that's another. Um, I also know that Mahak was recognized by them and that has been, they've really been, they've been referring to it as a model. Exactly. And I'm hoping that other uh, countries could. As a could model for civil society, just a model in, in the region as a civil society entity we can achieve. Despite war, despite all other other issues, you right. can. It's 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 about you can. Right, <laughs> right. So Mac is really really about that. But also, lastly, um, the internet. And she says, since we are on the internet, people just go and find out that this is um, totally for free, and they can contact us. And some people come to us through the internet. I think she has a question. Sorry, but sorry. Okay, so the question is, what proportion of the financial aid you get comes from outside Iran and how, what kind of a role it has played? Mm -hmm. بیکاز اف به خاطر محدودیت های زیادی که وجود داره و اینی که هر پولی که از خارج میاد چه به طرف از طرف اینجا چه از طرف ما اونجا مانیتور میشه که مبادا که سورس درستی نداشته باشه ما بسیار محدودیم در کمک ها بیرون هست خیلی زیاد هم هست ولی ما محدودیت دریافت این کمک ها داریم این کمک ها فعلا تنها به واسطه آی سی سی که شما میبینید اینجا میتونید سرچ بکنید یک نان پرافیتی که در کالیفرنیا به ثبت رسیده تنها کمکی رو ما میتونیم بگیریم که اونها دریافت میکنن و از افک اجازه میگیرن و بعد میتونن برای ما بفرستن This is the only way and this is the one in million percent I would say and this UNHCR, the High Commissioner for Refugees they are all, they have also a budget for us. It's, it's really nothing. It's five, I think about two, when you want to uh, make it in dollars, it's about $250,000 for all these. But, and it, this is not all what we pay, but that's still, it's, it's good that they pay that. <laughs> Um, and no and yes, uh, sanction is, uh, I, uh, when you allow me I, um, for preserving the time, I um, ask you, I um, answer you in English. Yeah, it's, um, uh, sanction is not about medicine, it's not about knowledge, knowledge exchange, it's not about the drug, but when sanction is about the transferring money, no bank will help us 
to transfer money to buy medicine or help uh, or, or having help from you as an individual, sending money directly to us, you can't do that. That's why in this field, yes, we have difficulties, but we are hoping that everything will be going to have a drastic change in near future, hopefully. Um, and I think the only part that was not translated was the earlier part of the answer that um, yes, there are a lot of people outside Iran who are interested and would like to help, but there are limitations in how much fund you can transfer because of all the, you know, the sanction and, and uh, uh, political uh, problems. So there are only one organization, uh, the International Society for Children's, Children with Cancer, who can do that, and the UNSCR. Um, with, to which we referred earlier. So, in other words, she says, out of many, many people, very few can actually make a difference. And I think uh, in the previously you explained that per year, each child, the cost of treating each child is about two thousand dollars. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it is, uh, you know, roughly. Uh, Chris. Uh -huh. Uh, as you may know, as a scientist, uh, um, in that part of uh, the world, uh, um, statistic doesn't work exact. You know that, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, we, uh, even as Iranian, we can't guess really how many real uh, uh, patients we have are all around the country. We had a, uh, um, we, we were thinking that we cover all. We cover every single child with cancer in the whole country. In a uh, um, trip that I had to a very, very uh, uh, rural area in the southern part of the country, I saw a child with a uh, face that you could guess, as somebody like me could guess, if this is cancer. But they thought this is a bees, an issue, yeah. an issue, Zambur, you know, injury, had the infection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, then uh, she, she had cancer, and we didn't know. Then I came back, and I said to our uh, PRs, Never ever say that we cover every child in Iran. We don't know really. That's why uh, we don't know about the uh, statistic. We are trying and we uh, can say that we are covering 95% of children because they first go to the doctors in the in a village, they refer them to the city. In, the, in every and each city we have representative. Uh, as a doctor or a hospital, they know about us. They are everything about us there, and then they refer them to to coming for the for one single time to Tehran to register. The parents they can come; they don't need to bring children, and then they go back to, the, uh, to their whatever uh, uh, facility they have in their city. When it's enough, they will stay there. We pay. When it's not enough, they come to Tehran. We will cover them. Uh, travel cost. Every every single thing we pay. And Actually, about the parents and the family being able to stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, the, the, the one that they have not enough facility or the uh, illness is so complicated or it's in the fourth uh, phase, which is really, really difficult and end the stage. We don't let them alone uh, in their door, in their villages and in their cities. They come to us. We have a huge facility to keep them in a five-star hotel just close to the hospital, do every possible thing, even being with them in a cemetery, even uh, having a, a psychologist to talk with parents, any possible uh, service that it's known in the world for these um, children and their family, we are doing this in Iran. Is that uh, enough? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, at the back. جوزف ببخشید میخوایم بلند شیم که ما ببینیم شما رو بیشتر مرسی عاشق اونایی هم که پول ندارن و میخوان کمک کنن. ریلی 
برای اینکه اونی که پول داره و میخواد کمک کنه آبیسلی تو پول یه اندازه میتونی خرج کنی بعد از اون دیگه نمیتونی خرج کنی بعد یه راهی برش پیدا کنی دیگه نه و اون که نداره میخواد خرج کنه ما براشون هزار تا راه داریم شما به عنوان یک دانشجو میتونین به تو دانشگاه خودتون دنبال عضو بگردین عضو آی سی سی میتونن بشن نه شما میتونین در واقع با با در واقع سوپرویژن آی سی سی اگر اینجا هستین خانم ها ما رپرزنتتیو آی سی سی اینجا هستن توی ایونت هایی که مربوط به در واقع ایران میشه باشین و معرفی کنین سازمانو جست دیس از این این اولین راهیه که میتونین بریم بعد یواش 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 خودتون راهو پیدا میکنین یک شعر یک صوفی ایرانی هست که در واقع عطارو همتون چند نفر عطارو میشناسن اوکی هر اگر نمیشناسین بعدن خواهید شناخت باید بشناسین اگه میره فارسی یاد میگیرین عطار میگه توی این راه تو قدم تو توی راه بنه و هیچ هیچ مپورس هیچ سوال نکن جاست واکینگ و راه به تو میگه که کجا باید بری بنابراین شما بیاین حتما خودش که شما رو میبره تا اونجا که بره Okay, let me translate this. This is too beautiful today. <laughs> okay, so she started by saying, I'm actually in love with people who want to help and don't have money. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, the question was, how could people like students like us who uh, don't have money to support financially, how could they be of a different, make a difference in, you know, in other countries in America? And her response is, I'm in love with people who want to help and don't have money because this is not all about money. And um, you could um, become a member of the International Society for Children with Cancer, which is actually bigger than MAHAC. It's not MAHAC, it's the International Society. And you can um, begin to learn about the institution, to talk to others about it. And then she explained a, um, something in a beautiful line of Atar, which is, Um, you, um, a, a, a um, 12th century, very important Persian uh, poet, the author of the Conference of the Birds, and hopefully many of you will get to read him if you haven't already. And he says, um, step on the road and don't ask any question. The road will tell you where you need to go. So that, you know, basically just this, your willingness to do this, to be a part of this effort is, is important. Ken? Do we need to talk, translate this in Farsi, or everybody got yeah, the question? Yeah. Well, yeah, Kara Farini is the translation mm -hmm. for um, yeah. Um, I think uh, many of you know already about that, that Iranian from nature, they are entrepreneurs, they are not researchers, they are entrepreneurs. Uh, throughout the history, you can see everywhere when, they, when it was necessary to to uh, leave the country, going to another country, they, they are never uh, staying working class. They are always, uh, uh, they start with something and they, ha they are very, really, really successful businessmen and entrepreneurs. In Iran also, it's the same. But you want to know, maybe it's important to, uh, more important to all of you to know, it's social entrepreneurship, which is even in this country a new issue that you, an entrepreneur is thinking not only about the profit, the, the new kind of thinking that when profit is there, I will profit that. It's, it's not only about me. I have to give the chance to others to profit uh, from, from what I'm doing. And this is a new uh, movement in our country that this a new issue in our mind to think that everything is not, not coming from government. We as people have to have step in the in the in the in the field and do something for us. Mm -hmm. This is what is going on now. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, and, <laughs> and I think I think in that relation, um, I saw a book published either in Iran or I'm not sure if it's in Persian or in English, but actually it was by a professor of um, Sharif University. Yes, a case study of Mahak as 
you know, a, a, a case of uh, entrepreneurship and um, how, do, how do we translate Karo Farini? I keep... Uh, I think it's, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a good entrepreneurship and, and, and it, but because entrepreneurship has that very heavy load of making, yeah, yeah, yeah. making profit, which you're trying to say, you know, could have other dimensions and not go in, in that direction. But, but the fact that Mahak was actually used by a university in Iran as a case of creating opportunities for others. Okay, I think we can take one more and then, yes. Right, uh, we are trying, thank you, that's an important point, but we're trying not to really focus that much on the fundraising or the aspects that would be more financial and focus on what we have actually been focusing on the whole time. But um, I think that Saida's answer was that step on the road and you'll find the next step, and that may indeed be one of the next steps. Uh, uh, can you stand up, please? <laughs> uh, this is a, another symbol of what we uh, just I mentioned about um, uh, this movement in Iran working uh, about our, our issues and asking everything from government, not asking that. She is running, this group are also running a charity and organization for helping disadvantaged and abused girls in yeah. Iran. Yeah and they have done a wonderful job. This is what uh, maybe in 10, year, 10 years ago, it was unbelievable that you can do it from here. The organization is based in England and working in Iran. This is a good news for all of you, especially Iranian here, to see that everything is going to be easier now to, to help, to serve your country. To serve your country, you don't need to go there to be there. You can serve from here also, thank you. Okay, so I think on that note, um, Hirajan, do you want to say something? I see you. I want to thank everyone for coming again on a busy day like this. I am supposed to give a tour to all the lovely students that are here, and of course our distinguished speaker. I look forward to doing that immediately after the lecture is over. Uh, if anyone else wants to join the tour, they're welcome to. I'll stick to about 40 minutes. Uh, other than that, thank you very much for coming. This has been a, quite an honor, and again, we're very honored to have you, your presence here in Washington, D.C. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.